Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create some amazing product shots from very ordinary looking shots just by using some free AI tools. The major one being the all new Google Gemini 2 Flash AI Image Editor, which is just absolutely amazing for such things because you're going to realize you will be able to create an entire product shot just by writing in prompts. We'll also be using a couple of other AI tools just to refine the final output. So let's get started with this. We have this image in front of us and you can see that this just doesn't look good. Something like what you could have probably taken in a light tent or even just with your cell phone and then remove the background. Then how do we turn this into something much more professional? Before I get started, just want to point out that the links to all the tools that I'm showing as well as all the images that we will be using have been given in the description so that you can work along with me. So once you are over at Google AI Studio, just make sure that under model you have Gemini 2 flash image generation experimental selected and in the output format you have images and text selected. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to upload this bad looking perfume bottle image. All right, so now that this image is here, this is the area where we have to write a prompt to turn it into a proper product shot. Now, this is the part where you might not right now have any idea of what to generate, right? So to solve this, what you can do is, let's say I go to Google and I just type in perfume product photography, since that is our product in this case, and then just go through the images and find an image that you really like. For example, in my case, one of the images that I really liked was this image that you can see in front of you. I've also given this image to you so that you can move along in the tutorial. So this is gonna serve as our reference image and we're gonna create something similar inside Gemini. And how that is gonna happen is the next step will actually take place inside ChatGPT. So what I did was I uploaded this reference image in ChatGPT and I said prompt to create attached image. So it gave me a pretty decent and a detailed prompt here. Uh, there were some issues here because obviously our product is not this bottle so we have to change that and also it had mentioned the exact text here which was uh, written okay so what i did was i then attached the image of our product and then i just said i want that prompt but the bottle should be this one also don't mention any words so then it gave me the perfect prompt that i want for this and then what you can do is you can just copy this and go back to google ai studio and just paste this here and just run this and let's see the result. And you can see that the result here looks absolutely amazing. We've just got this by writing a single prompt. But that's not all. We can do a lot of things with this now. So we can say add smoke in the background. And let's run this. And you can see that just like that it has added the smoke. This looks even more dramatic right now. And now maybe let's try to add something in the foreground. So maybe I can type in add a red rose in the foreground and you can see this time probably not such a great job the rose looks to the rose looks uh, slightly bigger so we can probably make the rose smaller the point is you can pretty much do anything and most of the times it really gives you you know incredible outputs yeah so again didn't really follow our command so maybe we'll just say remove the rose and replace it with crushed ice and you can see that even this doesn't look bad at all so again like the point is you know you can do pretty much anything that you want now you can even ask it to actually change the text so if i just slightly uh you know make this larger you can see that this text doesn't really make any sense so we can even type in replace the text on the box with the word and I can probably just right now say push my name so let's just see if it is able to do that and you can see that is absolutely amazing we haven't seen anything like this in the editing world and for one final change let's just maybe try to change the angle so change the angle of this shot so that it's shot from the side Let's see if it can do that. So it did change the angle, but not too much. So maybe we can just try this once more. This time, instead of side, let's just say shot from the top. So, and you can see that 
it has even done that. So you can even create variations from this one shot simply by writing prompts. That's amazing. Now, as pointed out a couple of times in my previous videos about Gemini, the more you keep on doing this, the worse the image quality gets. So usually it's a good idea to stick to around two to three prompts. That's where I've seen the image quality is still retained and you are able to make those changes. Anything more than that, you will start to see a lot of pixelation. So right now to move forward in the tutorial, what we will do is that we can either take probably something like this, I think, because from here on, it started to become a bit over the top. So I think something like this was a good balance between retaining that quality and also the shot being smart. And also you can try this a couple of times. For example, I wanted to create some more variations. And finally, I found this shot using, the, using exactly the same prompt, uh, but starting things from scratch. And I really liked this result a lot. So I'm going to use this particular image to move forward. I've also given you this image. Now, just one thing that you have to be careful of when it comes to these product edits is like, if I just open this particular shot that we were using, you can see in this case, yes, the pattern is similar to what we had in the original bottle. But this new image that I'm going to move forward with, this has a slight difference. And this can happen when you're using these AI tools. Let's have a closer look. So this new shot that I have chosen was this one. And uh, you can see that, yes, everything looked fine. This definitely looks like this bottle. But if you compare them side by side, if you notice this part, the pattern is a bit different from this. So the next question, if you have something like this, how do you correct this? Because this is going to happen a lot of times in product edits that a little part of the product might change. But then you really have to make sure it looks like the original if you really want to use this shot professionally. So I'm going to be showing you two ways how you can correct this. One will be using Photoshop and the second will be a completely free way. So let's see both these ways. So right now I've opened up this image inside Photoshop beta, not the normal Photoshop because the feature that we are going to be using to correct this is right now only available inside Photoshop beta. Photoshop beta, if you're not aware, is exactly like Photoshop and you do get access to it if you are a subscriber of Photoshop and Lightroom, basically the photo editing package given by Adobe via Creative Cloud. So you also get access to Photoshop beta and the only difference is in Photoshop beta, as the name suggests, there are some features which are being tested, which are also there, which are not there in the original Photoshop. And one of those features is that you can use generator fill along with the reference image feature, which is gonna be very important to correct something like this. So how do we do this? So first of all, we are just going to use generator fill like we do normally. That means, first of all, we have to make a selection. For this, we can take the any of the selection tools. Right now, I'm just taking the uh, selection brush tool, which was released by Adobe just last year. And in these cases, it actually works. I like to use it more than the normal selection tools like the lasso tool because you can just draw it like a mask and brush over the areas that you want to change. So this is the area that I want to change. And now this is where generative fill is going to work. But the moment I hit generative fill, because we are inside Photoshop beta, you can see that we have this reference image option. Now, how is this going to come handy? So what I've done here is that you can see this image number three, I've also given this to you. This is just a cropped part from this pattern here. That's all. I just cropped this image and I got this. And this is going to serve as a reference image. So what we can do is we can just attach it right here. And then we don't even need to write the prompt. That's the best part because it already knows that we want to generate something similar to this in this brushed area. So let's hit generate and let's see if it's able to replace it with the new pattern. And you can see that that has done a pretty good job. And now we have that bottle which has exactly that same pattern as the original one. We even get three variations. You can even generate a couple of times more till the time you get a perfect result. But this is one way. But what if you do not have Photoshop, then what do you do? So I'm also going to show you a completely free way to do this. And that is going to happen by going over to Focus AI. So Focus AI is an interface by which you can use Stable Diffusion Image Generator. It's very powerful. It's completely free. It takes less than 60 seconds to set this up on your computer. If you don't know how to do that, I have a separate video. The link to that setup video will be given in the description. But once you have followed that video and you can see this page, we're going to hit Input Image. Then we're going to go down and we will go to in paint or out paint tab. Let's upload this image that we got from Gemini. And it's going to work in a very similar way as to what we did with Photoshop because in the in paint tab, you again get a brush. So again, I'm just going to paint over this bad area. And now you have to ask yourself, just like in Photoshop, we gave that reference image to the software. 
So here, how do we do that? Well, we just go to the next tab, which says image prompt. And this is where we're gonna upload that cropped image. And now before we can hit generate, we actually have to tell focus that it has to blend or mix the whatever's in the in paint tab, which is the brushed part on the bottle and this. So how do we do that? Well, we are going to hit this option that says advanced. Uh, first, a couple of changes. Uh, you can just set performance to quality. So the, our final image will be of the highest quality. Image number you can leave at two. So we'll get two variations and see which one looks better. Output format, you can select JPEG. Now, how do we tell it to blend this? Well, we can go over to the advanced tab. Here you can check this option that says developer debug mode. And here under control, just make sure this option is selected, which says mixing image prompt and in paint, basically the, these two things. And that's it. We really don't need to do anything else. We're going to hit generate and let's wait for the results. All right, so both our results are ready. Let's just open this up and you can see that this has also fixed this. I think the second result looks much better. And usually with focus is a good idea. It might take a little bit of more time, but just set the uh, number of images inside settings to something like six or seven and take a bit of a break. And then one of the images definitely will give you a good result. And the final step will be because this image has after all come from Gemini, the image quality is not gonna be that great. And either you've used focus or Photoshop and those are also gonna be low resolution results. So you will have to upscale this. So you can use a free upscaler, AI upscaler like I love IMG or there are plenty of those out there. But right now let's put one of these final images here and then let's see the upscale result. All right, so this is the final result after upscaling it. And I think this looks pretty good. We went from this to this mainly using just free AI tools. And you really have to ask yourself when you look at how easy this was, that what is the future of photography and also what is the future of editing? Because if you look at this entire editing process also, there was practically no skill involved except for typing on a keyboard. So there's no doubt that even editing itself is evolving and is shifting from something that used to be skill-based to something that is more knowledge-based. In case this video helped you out, do give it a like. And if you want to follow along all my different experiments with the different and amazing AI image editing tools out there, then make sure you subscribe and I will see you next time.